Hello, welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to do is something a little different. We're going to check out a recent Logic Apps blog post with a new AI service called Notebook LM. And we're going to be able to take this blog post and turn it into a two-person podcast. Let's go. All right, so before we get started, this video is about Notebook LM. This is one of those experimental services provided by Google. And, uh, you know, as a result, this, this post, this video doesn't necessarily reflect the views of my employer. These are my personal views. But I thought this was kind of interesting to check out in the spirit of like content creation. Now, Notebook LM allows you to go ahead and upload documents or provide links that then basically ingests your data into their LLM and then allows you to go ahead and ask questions about your data. So that isn't overly a novel concept. Obviously, there's a lot of services out there today that allow you to do that. What I did think was a little bit interesting was that it also allows you, and this is optional, the ability to turn the content that you've just uploaded or linked to into a two-person podcast. So I thought it would be interesting to take an ex uh, a recent blog post. In this case, this was something that Divya put together. And to link to this particular blog post and then generate a podcast episode from it. So that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do here. I will put a link to this particular blog post uh, if you want to go check it out. Kind of the, the big news related to this blog post, if you haven't seen it, is that we've included some additional, uh, some additional actions, built-in actions that simplify the RAG pattern, the Retrieval Augmented Generation pattern that allows you to ingest and retrieve data from multiple sources. So that, and, and the two new areas are the parse document and the chunk document. Those were things that previously you had to call out to an Azure function um, or you had to do some scripting inside of the workflows itself. Now, the other thing that has happened related to this post is that we also have some pre-built templates for Logic App Standard that allow you to do this quite quickly. So that's kind of the basis of this particular blog post. And then what we'll do is we'll listen to the podcast and then we'll kind of see like where some of the differences are. Now, I don't expect, I hope everyone listens to the, the podcast. It is seven minutes long, but for those of you that may jump off, um, here's sort of my initial thoughts about this particular technology. Now on the positives, uh, it doesn't just read the article, which is kind of nice. Um, I was kind of expecting it to be more of like, hey, this is just going to transcribe what uh, the article is about. But it does turn it into a conversation. And I think that's why they've chosen two people to participate. So it becomes a little bit like a question and answer sort of thing where you've got a podcast host that is asking questions to the subject matter expert and the subject matter expert is providing, you know, the responses itself. What's also interesting is it does provide some additional context. So for example, it knew about logic apps and that actually became sort of one of the questions that the podcast host had where it's kind of like, Oh, what is this logic apps? Like, what does it do? Why do I care about it? And in this case, the subject matter expert was able to give a brief description of logic apps and some of the benefits. So I thought that was pretty cool. Obviously it's, you know, getting that information from somewhere outside of the article. I suspect, you know, it's trained on some public data already and, and it's probably leveraging that just a, a hunch. Uh, the other thing is it, it was pretty quick. Like, so I would say it took a couple minutes, maybe two to three minutes to go ahead and generate this podcast. So all in all, it was, it was pretty quick uh, to, to do that. And overall, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I usually look at these things as like more from an optimistic perspective where it's like, if this is sort of an early version of this capability, imagine what this looks like or listens like <laughs> in say one year or two years. And so for me, I generally do enjoy consuming content over audio. Like I'm a big fan of podcasts. I'm a big fan of audiobooks. I have an Audible subscription. Um, I also go ahead and, and use some of the free services that they're available from libraries and, and some employers have them as well. And so I could see myself, you know, batching some content and then being able to go ahead and listen to it for when I'm traveling 
or if I'm going for a walk, I think I'm a big fan of, of walking and getting exercise and naturally being able to listen to content while I go for that, that walk is, is a great thing. Now, on the areas of improvement, I did feel that the male voice, the, the podcast host, I felt that that was rather mechanical. I didn't feel that that sounded overly natural, but I did find that the female voice sounded more natural. So I think that was more of a positive on the female side, but the male side, not as much. Uh, this was a, sort of a big thing in my mind. It struggled with the RAG acronym. Uh, I can't even remember sort of how they pronounced it, but when you listen, you'll kind of hear, they kind of butcher that. And, and I feel like, I get it, acronyms can be tough, but in this case, RAG is a pretty common term, and it's pretty like foundational to this particular post. Um, like that is kind of the sort of underpinnings of how all of this is possible. So for that to be butchered, uh, it, it loses a lot of credibility. Like if, if you didn't know that this was a service that ingested the document and then it mispronounces that acronym, then it's you would lose a lot of credibility. It would be like, say, talking about NFL, the National Football League, and, you know, and, and calling it NFL, right? You were talking about, you know, whoever, the Kansas City Chiefs or pick your team and the NFL, and you would immediately lose an audience. So I kind of feel like that's kind of a parallel. And, and obviously, that's probably a tough problem to solve. But you would think for something like RAG, it would have a better understanding of that. The other thing, because it can add additional context and content, and so I, I called that out as a positive, that also sort of leaves some room for sort of hallucinations or making things up. So there is probably an element of sort of fact checking that is required here. Um, when you listen to it, you can kind of see some things where it's like, eh, I don't know if I would sort of explain it quite like that, but um, you know, just sort of keep that in mind. And then I would also say in this case, and I don't know if there's a way to sort of tune this, to be able to go back and say, hey, what about templates? But they did miss templates as being part of this announcement. So templates was at the, the bottom end of the article. Perhaps that's part of the reason for it. But that's kind of a, a fairly big piece to miss out. So now I'm gonna go ahead, uh, there's no sort of visual for this, it's just audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this, it's about seven minutes, and um, I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comments about, do you like this, do you hate it, uh, do you think it's promising, do you think it's trash? Uh, I'd love to hear your perspectives. Okay, so how do you access the service? Just go to notebooklm.google.com. If you have an existing Google account, you're good. Um, uh, there was no, I didn't have to pay, I didn't have to put in a credit card, nothing like that. Seems like a pretty legit trial. And uh, once you're there, you can go ahead and just add a source. Now here, you can obviously pull from Google. I dropped a link, so this was a website link. I haven't tried the YouTube, that's kind of interesting. That, that might be something to uh, explore in the future, or you can copy and paste text. So I just selected website, and then I pasted that Logic Apps URL, and, and that was kind of it. Then it gives you sort of the summary, the ability to go ahead and chat with your data. And then there is an option basically over here. It's not shown now because it's done it for us, but you can say, turn this content into a two person podcast. Uh, once you've gone ahead and done that, you can actually go ahead and share it. Uh, it is not publicly accessible by default. So you have to sort of enable that. And uh, you can also go ahead and download. It'll download a wave file. So let's go ahead. Let's give this a play. Okay, so this AI thing, right? Everyone's talking about it. And you sent us this article about using it to analyze your own data. But get this, without any coding. Yeah, no code AI is a hot topic right now. For good reason, right? Yeah. The articles from the Microsoft Azure team seems pretty legit. And it's all about something called uh, logic apps. Am I saying that right? You got it. Logic apps. They're kind of like that secret weapon for people who want to use AI, but, you know, without needing to be a coding whiz. So I got to sort of jump in. I think that was a great description. I, I think, you know, to it's kind of the secret weapon for, uh, say, people to be able to build low-code AI applications. And what's funny is, like, I don't think that ex appears in the article itself, but that's very much how we position Logic App. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. Which is most of us, let's be real. But the article, it mentions this whole document ingestion thing. Sounds a bit, I don't know, jargony. 
What's that about in plain English? Okay, so imagine you want to teach a computer to, I don't know, understand a cookbook, right? Like all those recipes. I'll phone with you. Document ingestion is basically getting those recipes ready for the computer to actually read them, scanning, digitizing, making it all nice and organized. It's like translating our stuff into AI language. Exactly. AI needs data in a specific way to really, you know, work its magic. Document ingestion is all that behind the scenes prep work. Got it. But how does this no code thing actually work with AI then? I always thought you needed to be like some kind of coding genius for that. Well, that's where logic apps come in. It's all drag and drop, super visual. Think of it like building a flow chart, but instead of just shapes, you're using these pre-built blocks and each block's a different action. Okay, that does sound easier than I pictured. Oh, it's way easier. And there's a block for everything. You need to grab files from your Dropbox. There's a block. Want to pull text from a PDF? Boom, there's a block for that too. So you're basically building. See, and then there's an example in the article, there's no mention of Dropbox. So what is happened here is that they've pulled other content from the public domain in order to sort of make that, that statement. Building this little AI workflow without writing a single line of code. You got it. That's impressive. And the article, it mentions these two specific actions, parse document and chunk text. What do those do exactly? Right, so remember how we talked about prepping data for AI? Well, parse document is like if you took a messy stack of papers and turned them into this neat typed up document, it takes any file PDFs, Word docs, even PowerPoints, and just pulls out all that text. No more copying and pasting from a zillion different places. That alone would save me so much time. Tell me about it. And then chunk text. That's the next step. Once you have all that clean text, this action breaks it down into smaller, bite-sized pieces for the AI to process. Like chapters in a book? Perfect analogy. AI needs those digestible chunks to actually understand and analyze the information. And you know what? This all feeds into something called the retrieval augmented generation pattern, mm -hmm. R for short. It's how AI actually learns from all that data you've given it. Okay, R it is. This is usually... So see, there were, that, that was like their attempt at talking about RAG. Um, they were calling it R. So that's kind of a little weird, but um, let's let's continue. Really where I start to get lost. So please break it down for me. What actually happens in this whole R process? Sure. The article breaks it down into a few key steps, and it all starts with something we've touched on, document collection. This is where logic apps really shines. Okay, hold that thought. We're going to dive into all the details of RI right after this. Okay, yeah. so RA, this AI thing, it's all about how the AI learns from our data, right? And we left off at document collection. Exactly. And logic apps, like we were saying, it just makes that whole first step so much smoother. Smoother than I'm used to, that's for sure. But okay, so logic apps, it grabs all the data from... Well, from anywhere, really seems like. Pretty much. We're talking over 1,400 different sources. Cloud storage, email, databases, you name it. Wild. No more hunting down files myself. That's a win already. Mm. But once it has everything, then what? That's where those actions we mentioned come in. The parsing and the chunking. Logic Apps takes those documents, whatever they are, pulls out the important stuff, the text, and then nicely divides it all up makes it manageable for the AI. Right, right, no need to go over that again. But then the article mentions this vectorization. And I gotta be honest, I have a feeling this is where it goes over my head. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Think of it this way. Imagine teaching a robot to tell the difference between, say, a news article and a social media post, right? You wouldn't use the words themselves to explain it. You'd talk about the characteristics, the length, the tone, maybe their emojis, that kind of thing. So like instead of the actual words, the AI looks for these what signals these clues that help it make sense of things exactly and those characteristics those clues they get turned into code that the AI can understand that's basically what vectorization is huh so what's kind of interesting about this and I think this is where it's actually kind of neat uh, so Divya in her blog post doesn't get to this level of detail about some of the mechanics of how these things work and so for, uh, say, a listener in this case, uh, you know, that's kind of the benefit where they're getting this additional context that they would not have otherwise. They would have to go and search for it and sort of find and better understand, hey, what do all these things mean? But, you know, that's kind of, I think, the opportunity here, whereas that, you know, listener now gets additional information. Now, you could argue that that listener may not need that information, right, for someone that may be more familiar 
with this technology, but um, I thought that was kind of neat that it gives some additional explanations. Like giving the AI a cheat sheet to decode our human stuff. Exactly. Okay, and logic apps, it just does that automatically. Don't tell me I need to learn another technical term. Nope, it handles it all for you. It uses something called Azure OpenAI's Generate Embeddings action, but honestly, you don't need to worry about the specifics. It's all happening seamlessly in the background. Music to my ears. Less jargon, more magic. That's my motto. But okay, so data is collected, parsed, chunked, vectorized. Is that it? Is the AI ready to go at that point? One last step. Ingestion. All those nice prep chunks of data, they get stored in a special database. Think of it like the AI's personal library. Organized and everything, ready to go whenever the AI needs it. Precisely. It's like having, I don't know, a personal assistant that not only gathers all your documents, but also preps them for your big presentation and then files them neatly afterwards. Okay, now that, that I can get behind. Uh, Way more efficient than me trying to do it all myself, that's for sure. But can we maybe switch gears a bit? This has all been super cool, but I think our listener might be wondering, what's in it for me? You know, we've talked tech, but what can you do with all this in real life? Ah, getting to the good stuff. Remember, we're thinking about the learner persona here, right? Someone who wants to absorb information quickly, efficiently. Right, they don't have time to waste. Exactly. So imagine you're working on a big project. You've got a stack of research papers to get through. Well, feed them to logic apps. Okay, and it's going to... Read them for me. Even better. It'll pull out the key takeaways, summarize different viewpoints, even highlight areas where the research agrees or disagrees. Think of it like, you know, having a team of research assistants working for you, but without the actual team. Now, that would be a game changer, for sure. Yeah. No more all-nighters, just to get through the reading list. Oh, exactly. Or, let's say you want... So that's a, an interesting example, and I think that is definitely true. I think... The, the only thing I would say is that it's, uh, you know, it, it's not Logic Apps doing that completely on its own. Obviously, like there's the Azure OpenAI service that's behind it. But using the connectors that we do provide does allow you to go ahead and sort of fulfill that. So they might be oversimplifying things here a little bit. But, um, but it is, you know, it was nice to sort of, you know, provide some sort of a use case of, of how this could be done. Because once again... That's not in the article. The article doesn't talk about research, research papers and things of that nature. To learn a new skill, right? Instead of spending hours searching online, you could have logic apps analyze a bunch of courses, tutorials, all that. It could tell you which ones are actually relevant to what you want to learn, highlight the most important concepts, even create like a personalized study guide. So it's not just for work stuff, it could actually help people learn more effectively too. Exactly. I mean, wow, from what is document ingestion Ooh. to personalized learning, AI analyzing our meetings, so cool. Right, and honestly, we're just scratching the surface. As AI gets even more sophisticated, who knows what we'll be able to do. It's exciting, for sure, but maybe a little intimidating too. So for our listener who's probably ready to jump in and try this out, right. what's the most important thing to keep in mind? Don't be afraid to experiment, but always, always double check the results. AI is powerful, but it's not perfect. And think critically about the information it gives you. So like with any new tool, use it responsibly, right? Exactly. Well, this has been an amazing deep dive, I got to say, from kind of scary tech jargon to stuff we can actually use in our lives. The power of AI right in your hands. Exactly. Thank you so much for, you know, breaking it all down for us. Happy to do it. It's an exciting time to be in this field. And to you, dear listener, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you learned a ton, and more importantly, that you're inspired to try out these tools yourself. Until next time, keep that curiosity alive and keep on diving deep into the world around you. So yeah, that's the that's the podcast. Um, obviously, there's a few hiccups there along the way, right? Like they broke to a commercial break, which was kind of weird. Um, I don't know what they would expect someone to do, chop that up and, and then place it in an ad. So that was kind of weird. Uh, and then I think there was one part where the host sort of interrupted the SME and then the SME sort of, sort of skipped a, a beat. It was kind of like listening to CDs back in the day and when they would skip. So that was kind of weird. But... Once again, I think with all of this stuff, it's not about where it is today. It's about where this is going. So because some pretty promising technology here, um, it's kind of interesting. I, I do enjoy how it did try to sort of complement the existing content itself, try to explain it. 
Um, you know, obviously this stuff can be fairly technical in nature. So overall, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, obviously room for improvement, but not bad. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead, drop that in the uh, comments. Thanks and uh, see you again soon on the channel.